everyone. Welcome back to the Farmhouse Gathering Porch. Up on the porch today, we have our regulars. We have Annie with 15 Acre Homestead, Kathy with Oak Hill Homestead, Shauna with Homegrown Self-Reliance, and me, I'm Julie, over at The Farm Wife. Today, we are talking about our gardens. We are chomping at the bit to have some of those fresh vegetables coming in so we can indulge. But come to find out, each one of us has a different favorite. Stick around, talk to us, visit with us, and we'll find out who's got what favorite, why we like them, and we'll go from there. We're looking forward to the visit. Hi. I'm Annie from 15 Acre, and today we're talking about our favorite things to grow in the garden. Um, mine happen to be herbs, and when I say herbs, I mean any kind of herbs. Um, I think the reason for it is because you can grow them inside, you can grow them outside, it doesn't matter. Um, they're easy to grow, you can grow them in water, you can grow them in your yard, you can grow them in containers. They're just a really versatile uh, plant to grow. Uh, with me living in the city right now, I'm kind of limited to what I can grow because obviously I'm not where I'm going to be living permanently. So I didn't want to start, you know, like a huge herb garden or a really big vegetable garden um, in the high hopes that I'll find a place uh, of my own soon and I want to take my plants with me. So I'm going to take you on a really short video tour uh, of the herbs that I bought that are up on the porch. Um, I put them in pots and hanging baskets. Um, <clears throat> and I've done so because my grandchildren love fresh herbs and they tend to pick all the leaves off. So I've done them all in hanging baskets, um, very few in pots. Rosemary they don't like, so that's in a pot. Um, but I also do like to grow vegetables, and I'll show you some of those as well. Uh, if I was on the farm and had my 15 acres or even a large enough spot to grow vegetables in, I would probably do a lot more, but currently with my situation, my favorite thing is herbs. I can grow them anywhere in any climate at any time of the year. Uh, and they're so, like I said, they're so versatile. So I'm going to go ahead and take you on a tour of uh, the herbs that I bought to grow for right now and some of the vegetables. I'll share those videos next. And then um, we'll go ahead and check out what Kathy and Shauna like to grow on their homesteads. All right. Have a good day. Bye. So these are the herbs that I was telling you about. Um, I got lemon verbena. I've got two of them. One's there and one's back there. I've got rosemary. I have this red reuben basil and sweet basil. I have this other hanging basket of peppermint. I've got two pots of those in there. This is my dill, one of them. I've got marjoram, which I've never grown before, but we're gonna try it. Back here, let me see if I can bring it out here for you. Um, this is the uh, basil, the Thai queen it's called. Uh, and I've also got a cinnamon basil in the front here. This is cilantro and dill in that pot. Two types of cilantro and dill. Um, these are the normal herbs that I grow. I'm sorry about the shaky camera, but uh, I put them in pots because my grandchildren love the taste of herbs, especially cilantro. So um, Those are the herbs that I bought, and uh, I'll show you the vegetables here in just a minute. Okay, so the vegetables that we have that we're going to start are some <clears throat> burpless uh, cucumbers, some Hungarian hot wax peppers, I've got some elite zucchini in the back, some hot peppers as you see back here, I got two tomato plants, an okra, and some long thin cayenne peppers. Um, these are pretty much all the vegetables that we're going to put in. Um, they're going to go over here. I started making a spot that we're going <clears> to <throat> dig out in front of this this uh, bush right here. So this is going to be our vegetable garden. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have much of a spot there, so all you get to see is a, a piece of grass, but 
that's the vegetables that we bought. Hi, I'm Kathy from Oak Hill Homestead, and I'm here this week to talk about my favorite thing to grow in the garden, which in my case is tomatoes. First of all, I wish I could be outside in my garden showing you my tomato plants, but it's raining today. So, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men, and here we are indoors, not looking at the tomato plants. But believe me, they do have little tiny pea-sized green tomato plants, tomatoes on those plants right now. And I'm excited, waiting for them impatiently to grow and to ripen. I've loved tomatoes ever since I was a kid. My dad and I grew them in the backyard. I was maybe 10 years old and he built a little picket fence about a whole foot tall because we had a pet tortoise and we had to keep him out of the tomato plants. And that was all we grew was tomatoes and nasturtiums. And yes, that's all we grew was tomatoes. Dad loved tomatoes as much as I did. And we'd go outside and weed our little garden at night. He'd even take a salt shaker out with us. The tomatoes very rarely made it into the house. We ate them right out there and they were so good. So tomatoes are why I began gardening again as an, as an adult. We moved around a lot, so it was years before I was able to grow a garden again. But when I had a place that had a yard, and we knew that we would be there long enough to, to grow something and have it actually ripen before we moved again, tomatoes were what I grew. Sun-ripened tomatoes right off the vine are absolutely delicious, and they just don't compare to a tomato from the grocery store. Those are actually grown to withstand transportation, not because of flavor. Until just a few years ago, the only kind of tomatoes I grew were red ones. <laughs> Cherries, cherry tomatoes, slicing or salad tomatoes, beef steaks. It didn't matter, but they were all red. Because to me, a green tomato or a purple tomato just wasn't right. Tomatoes should be red. However, I did actually end up growing some small yellow pear, um, yellow pear tomatoes one year. They're about the size of a cherry tomato, but shaped more like a pear, and they were so good. That was my first little foray into something besides red tomatoes, and they were delicious. And from there, I branched out into Cherokee purples, some orange ones, some black cherry tomatoes, uh, snow white cherry tomatoes, and many others. And each year I grow something different, a new variety, because one of the fun things about gardening is trying something different. Gardening is an experiment, just like life is, and mysteries are fun. This year, a friend gave me some tomato plants that she had started from seed. Uh, they're, they're black tomatoes and they're called carbon. I'm very curious to find out how these taste. She says they're delicious, and I'm sure they will be because all tomatoes are good. So far they're growing well in, in the garden and I'm really looking forward to those. My favorite, one of my favorites right now, is Snow White. It's a cherry tomato. The name is a bit of a misnomer. They're actually not white, they're pale yellow, but they are very sweet, very delicious, and I really enjoy those. Uh, I found the seeds at Baker, Baker Creek and uh, they grow pretty well in my garden. Also, in a jar on my kitchen counter, there are four more rooted tomato cuttings that need to be planted this week. Uh, I'm growing over seven varieties of tomatoes this year. That might sound like a lot since I'm the only person in the house that eats tomatoes. What do I do with them all, you ask? Well, I share with family and friends. Mostly I eat them all. <laughs> I eat all those cherry tomatoes out in the garden and I don't even take out a salt shaker like my dad did. I eat them right off the vine they're my reward for spending time in the garden. Weeding isn't fun, eating cherry tomatoes is. So did you know that you can actually can tomatoes no matter what kind you're growing? They don't have to be paste tomatoes. Roma, whatever other variety there are, many people feel that that's the only kind that you can can, but that's not true. You can can any kind. They might be a little juicier. You might need a few more to actually fill up a jar of spaghetti sauce but you can always cook them down longer too to get rid of the juice, the moisture, and have them be thicker. So don't think that you can't can tomatoes just because you don't have romas. You can can any time. And if it's too hot in the summertime to can all those tomatoes, I have a solution for that too. Put them in the freezer. I wash them, cut out the core at the top, 
put them into zippered plastic bags, freezer bags, and put them in the freezer. When the weather cools down and my kitchen cools down, uh, you just take out the bag, take out the tomatoes, run them under some hot tap water, and that thaws that skin and it slips right off the tomatoes. You don't even have to spend time peeling them. They just slip right off. And believe me, if you're adding cherry tomatoes to whatever it is that you're cooking, that's the only way to peel cherry tomatoes. It can be very tedious if you do it without freezing them first. Adding all kinds of different types and varieties of tomatoes to your spaghetti sauce or salsa or whatever it is that you're making adds a real depth of flavor that you'll, you won't get just by using Roma tomatoes. So mix them up. Have some fun. Enjoy them. I've written an article on canning any variety of tomato, and you'll find it on my blog, oakhillhomestead.com. We'll put the link down in the comments. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest also. I'd be happy to see you there. So go make some tomato sauce, spaghetti sauce, salsa, whatever it else it is that you like to eat tomatoes in. Go do it. Have fun. Grow tomatoes. We'll see you next week. This is Kathy from Oak Hill Homestead. Hey guys, it's Shauna. So it's really hot and muggy today, but today we're talking about our favorite thing to grow in the garden. And mine just so happens to be cucumbers. Let's take a look. So last year, my cucumbers didn't do so well. Uh, I just did them on the ground and uh, I think they got a little sunburnt. Um, ended up turning very bitter and yellow. Um, but normally cucumbers grow re really well around here. Um, they like it pretty hot, don't have a lot of nutritional needs per se. But they do enjoy growing up a trellis. So this year I made a trellis out of T-posts and welded wire. So this section is about 15 foot long. I plan on growing a lot of cucumbers this year on it. It's just sitting on the ground down here. And it's secured pretty well here up at the top. So it won't go anywhere. And it's fairly sturdy. So the plan is plant the cucumbers down at the bottom of the trellis. And they will grow up this. And then the cucumbers themselves will actually hang down underneath. So they'll be easier to pick. Won't have to be on my knees picking the picking the cucumbers up. And it's also going to cause a little bit of shade, which is good because I also planted some lettuce and some spinach under here. They haven't popped up yet, but uh, they like it a little cooler, so they're going to benefit from the shade that the cucumber plants are going to make for it. So... Over here, I've got my little cucumber transplants that I just put in a couple weeks ago. And I laid down some mulch around it to help keep some of the weeds down. Definitely need a lot more because I got a bunch of weeds popping up. But that was at least to get them going and a little more established going to add a bunch of grass clippings and straw as mulch. Probably lay down some cardboard in the walkways as well. So, like I said, most of these are pretty small. Here's one of my bigger ones. It's doing a little better. And then... I think this one's my biggest one so far. Looks a little dry, I need some water. But a few years ago, I planted cucumbers on the ground and they spread all over the place and I had huge cucumbers. They were just absolutely gorgeous. So hopefully these will do the same thing, just 
growing vertically. We'll have to see. What's your favorite thing to grow in the garden? Hey everyone, I'm Julie at The Farm Wife. And I'm going to be quite frank with you. My favorite vegetable of all time is a squash. Now, for years I grew the crookneck squash. They're an heirloom. They're good. Until one day I discovered lemon squash. Now you can order lemon squash seeds at Baker Creek. I think the website is rareseeds.com. I ordered some out of curiosity. They're about this big around. They look like a lemon. And I'm going to tell you what, the first time I ate them, I loved them. The skin of them are quite as thick as the crook neck. And the first thing we did, of course, was we sliced them up and we fried some. You don't get any better than lemon squash that's fried. But then the next taste test was other things, like my Aunt Dot squash casserole. Oh, that stuff is so good. So far, I have not found one way you can prepare squash that doesn't do well with the lemon squash. It tastes the same, a little bit more squash, richer flavor. But basically, it's the same thing. They are wonderful. The best part about it for me is they're an heirloom, so I can save the seeds and grow the same ones from next year. But do you want to know my favorite way of fixing squash? And that's with my Aunt Dot squash pickle recipe. That stuff is addictive. It's sweet, but it's got your onions and your bell pepper and your squash in it. It is some of the best stuff. Excellent side dish for barbecues or cold salads or whatever meal you want to prepare. Visit me over at the website because I do have that recipe up and I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Coming in a close second to squash, I love growing bell pepper, onion, and celery. Now, I've just started celery this year, but so far it's looking good. But why do I grow those? The country boy comes from South Louisiana, and bell pepper, onion, and celery are all considered the Cajun Trilogy. If you cook anything that has a South Louisiana flair to it, well, those three things are going to be in it. Now, you'll also have some garlic in some, but primarily bell pepper, onion, and celery. And those three combined makes everything taste good. Well, I'm real curious to know, what are your favorite vegetables? You've heard from Annie, you've heard from Kathy, Shauna, and me. Now we'd really like to hear what your favorite one is and why it is. As always, we are so glad that you stopped by to visit with us on the porch. We look forward to the next visit that we have with you. Make sure you check out the links that we have. That's going to help you with all of the things we've talked about. And be sure to visit our sites. And if you have any questions about most anything that's homemaking, homesteading, simple life related, you just ask one of the four of us. We'll either have the answer or put our heads together on the next porch visit and come up with one for you. Y'all have a great week. We'll see y'all next Friday.